So this interactive lecture is going to look at reflection and evaluation of your coaching process. Now, it's quite easy to establish whether or not your training programs are effective, but understanding if you as a coach, if you're effective, that's, that's another matter. But through this interactive lecture, we'll delve a little bit more into this. So first we have to look at what is reflection. And reflection is looking back. It's actively looking back on your coaching and trying to see if your coaching was effective, if you were able to achieve the outcomes of that session. Now that might be something as simple as a, a programming um, evaluation. But what I want to look at here is, are you evaluating what you do as a coach? So first we look at reflection and how effective your coaching was from session to session. Is it always trending upwards or is it starting to peter out a bit? And how can you identify if your ability to coach and interact with your players is actually improving? How can you evaluate and identify if your coaching um, is effective from session to session? So, like I said previously, evaluating a training plan or a game-specific performance is, is relatively easy. In, in, for a training plan, we can see performance markers going up, strength improving in the gym, the ability to express force. When it comes to a game specific important performance um, is the athlete winning is their performance on the pitch improving are they being more successful in their given sport but how often can we identify if our coaching is improving if we are if we as coaches are more effective if we are achieving our philosophy that we sent out um, are our players buying in and being respectful to the philosophy that we believe in so this process of evaluating your own coaching is something that I believe um, very much so in. Um, having a background in teaching, it was something that I would have to do on a daily basis, was reflect on myself as a teacher. If I was effective in the classroom, if I was able to express my message in such a way that the students uh, bought into it. And from that, were they developing not only as students, but also through their characters. And I think that's a part that we need to play as coaches. We're not just there to improve the athlete's performance, but we're there to help them grow as people. And if we have an ethos within a team, it's something that we want to embody in the players. And being able to evaluate your coaching is a clear way to identify whether or not that you're achieving this ethos. So in retrospect of what do I do on a daily basis? Well, after my sessions, I sit down and I try to identify what I did well um, and what also didn't work. Uh, what I did well from a practical perspective, uh, maybe it's a skill aspect. Uh, did I perform that skill uh, appropriately? But also was the way in which I interacted with my players, was that effective? Was the way in which I tried to deliver a message, was that effective? The way in which I tried to deal with a conflict situation. Did I did I choose the appropriate process in dealing with that situation? And vice versa, what did I not do well? Did I maybe scream or interact with a player that had a detrimental effect on that session? Or maybe had a detrimental effect on my relationship with that player? And all of these things, I sit down after my sessions and I try to identify uh, whether or not they went well or they didn't go well. So it's the aim of every coach to try and become as professional as possible, try to become as close to an expert as possible. So when we look at this, what are the areas that we need to, to work on? So knowledge is the important thing. Um, do we have the appropriate knowledge um, to deliver our, our, uh, our, our sessions and to enable our players to perform better? Um, can we quantify if our performance and our players' support performance is improving? And how do we identify that progress, whether it's a simple marker such as performance in the gym or it's a marker on yourself, how are you progressing? Can you identify how your ability or your coaching ability is improving? Um, and with respect to that, are you effective in the way that you coach? Uh, do you get your message across to the players? Are they easily able to digest what you're uh, displaying. And finally, professionalism. Um, are you professional in your process? Are you professional in your manner? 
And is this something that the players um, can see and they can, uh, they can feed off? So how do I collect data on my Bowen performance? Well, firstly, I keep a log. So I write down what went well and what didn't go well. Um, I try, if possible, to record my own sessions um, and see actually physically how I interact with my players and look at the sessions unfolding and see what situations occur and how I dealt with them. And it's a process that we do a lot um, in a team basis that we record the sessions for the players to see back how they played. But it's also important that we record sessions to see how, 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 how we performed. Um, I look for feedback from my colleagues, so other coaches I'm working with, and see how they feel my performance went. And this open dialogue of speaking with other coaches is, is an effective process to identify how well you're performing. And then finally, I look for feedback from my players. Do they feel that went well? Did I explain that well? Um, and so on. So areas I believe that you need to identify when looking at and evaluating your own coaching is the relations that you developed. What type of relationships have you developed with your players? Are your players, um, do they respond well to you? Um, and also, are your players motivated? So are your players motivated to train and uh, come to training? And this is a clear indication to um, how well you are performing as a coach. So for me, looking at what experts do and looking at what coaches that would be identified as experts in their field, and what do they do and try to take from them and trying to mold that into my own process as a, as a coach. So one individual I like to look at is uh, John Wooden and he would be generally identified as one of the best coaches, uh, definitely in basketball, but ideally across most sports. And John had a couple of messages that he embodied. And these were first be true to yourself. So what he meant by being true to yourself was believing in your own process, um, believing what you set out to achieve and not kind of uh, going away from that. And the next thing he said was always keep moving. So he didn't mean this as a physical sense, but uh, always looking to progress, uh, always looking to build on success and learn from failure. Um, he also believed in make, making each day a masterpiece. Um, so he says, from this, that his intent was um, to try and make every single task that you approach perfect. He believed very much in helping others, and that should be a, a basis for all coaches. Is That's your job as a coach, is to ensure that your players are improving. And not just from a physical perspective, but from a social perspective, if they're young athletes, or um, everything that encompasses as a player trying to improve that as a, as a coach. He also believes that things are earned, not entitled. So he believes that you should work for everything. And the work ethic that you expect from your players, well, you should expect the same from yourself and probably higher. So this process of going and reflecting and evaluating on your own coaching process is, is something that should be second nature to us as coaches. We should be consistently evaluating and reflecting on our own process. He believed in giving gratitude and receiving gratitude. And this was, this feeds into the next aspect of character. And he believed very much in developing the character of the athlete before developing them physically, that their actions and their deeds spread far and wide. And you're a winner in life, he used to say, um, before you're a winner on the, on the court. And this is something that he tried to embody, that you're trying to, to develop men, um, um, rather than develop the athlete, so it's it's the character you're looking to improve, not just the uh, not just the player. Now, if we also look at other situations of uh, great coaching, we can look no further than the All Blacks. And one thing that the All Blacks believed in was um, good people make good All Blacks, and something that I I believe is very important, and it's something that I uh, embody in my own philosophy as a coach. And it's something that I try and look back when I'm evaluating my own coaching. And this is something that I'm trying to push and it's something that I'm trying to achieve. That I'm not just trying to make better players, but I'm trying to make better people. Also, Greg Popovich, uh, for those who don't know, Greg Popovich is a renowned uh, basketball coach in the NBA and 
has been the head uh, coach for the San Antonio Spurs for the past 21 years. And he has been incredibly successful. And one thing about Greg is he develops the player before he develops the athlete. So he develops the person first. Steve Kerr, who worked under the tutelage of Greg Popovich, is another coach. And Steve is very, very similar in this process. And and Steve constantly speaks about uh, coaching and speaks about evaluating his own coaching and trying to figure out what is the most effective coaching for his players. So not necessarily trying to suit his players to his coaching, but to suit his coaching to his players. And that's something that you will need to do and need to identify, that every player is different. And just because you believe uh, you should coach in a certain way, the situation will dictate that you should coach in, in, in that way. So I look to a model. I look to a model of evaluating and reflecting, and it, it falls into making a plan. First, I have to identify what are my goals. So my own goals are to increase player engagement, or my goal might be to increase my coaching effectiveness. And setting goals is, is, is the framework. It's, it's the starting point. It's like anything. You have to set a goal first and be able to establish that before you can identify if your coaching is improving. So here's the process that I, I follow. So firstly, I reflect. After I reflect, I evaluate on my coaching and then I try and adapt from that. And it's a continued process that I do. So a little bit more in depth in this model is the first thing I'll do is I'll have my plan. So just like I did when I was a teacher, I had a lesson plan. Every time I go coaching, I have a lesson plan. And this lesson plan will incorporate what I want to achieve from a physical perspective, but also points that I want to achieve from a, from a coaching perspective, what I want to do myself, what I want to focus on, what I want to improve on. From that, I'll reflect on that session to see if I achieved those goals. Did I achieve what I set out to achieve? I will rate my session. So I'll rate it as a good session, a bad session, a poor session, and identify why. From that, I will evaluate the session. So I've rated it by giving it a score, and I'll evaluate why. Why did I give it that rating? Why did I give it a good? Why did I give it a bad? Why did I give it a poor? And finally, I'll try to adjust. So I'll try and make some adjustments in that session, what I would have done differently. So within that same session, I'll try to identify what I could have changed. And then finally, I'll try and rectify it. So I'll look at when, what went wrong or what went right. And I'll try and incorporate that into my next lesson plan. And from there, I'll try to improve my coaching, my coaching process.